Okay, we are at uh, section 16.2. Uh, this is, uh, uh, I think it's called traveling waves, uh, no matter. Um, let's share the PowerPoint and imagine shaking a, a rope up and down so that you get a sinusoidal um, motion. And the, the, the particles on the individual parts of the rope don't actually move, but the wave travels down. So we have to differentiate between the particles on the, the rope, as it were, uh, or whatever the medium is, that they don't travel, but the wave travels. It's called a traveling wave. Um, so the, uh, you can see that the, uh, that the wave has traveled, you know, the velocity of the wave times t, it's traveled at, at t equals zero, it's the brown wave. At, uh, at t, you know, this is the, the, the velocity of the wave propagation times t that gives you how, how far it's gone. And uh, let's uh, look, uh, let's read the caption here. The wavelength lambda of a wave is the distance between a drip adjacent crest or adjacent trough. So the, the top amplitude is called a, a, uh, a crest and the bottom is called the, uh, the troughs and where they cross, cross the zero, I call that the zero crossing. So it's important to understand um, the different, how to measure wavelength. The wavelength is easiest measured uh, from crest to crest or trough to trough. They show that there, it's the Greek letter lambda is the wavelength. Uh, if you're gonna measure from zero crossing to zero crossing, it has to be in the same direction. So if, it, if you're measuring at the uh, descending zero crossing, you have to wait till you get to the next uh, descending zero crossing to measure the wavelength. Uh, now the period of the period T of a wave is the time interval required for the element to complete one cycle of its oscillation and for the wave to travel one wavelength. Uh, so that's the that's the period. And we're gonna learn that one over the period is frequency. Um, so uh, frequency is equal to one over the period. It's the inverse of the period. So um, the frequency is cycles per second. Uh, period is seconds per cycle. Um, now we don't call frequency cycles per second. We have a name for it called Hertz, but it is by definition how many cycles per second. Um, the uh, so the the uh, the function is y x uh, zero is equal to a sine. Uh, the small a x and the small a is going to be determined. Uh, it's a constant that's going to be determined. So y of zero comma zero is equal to a sine of zero. It, it equals zero. Now a, a y of uh, lambda over two zero is equal to a sine a lambda over two equals zero. Now lambda over two is just the uh, uh, the half wavelength, and so it's it's gone, it's gone up and it's gone down. That's lambda over two. You're back at the at the zero point. Now, so uh, a lambda over two is equal to pi. Uh, now there's two pi in every uh, every wavelength. So a of lambda over two is equal to pi. So a is equal to two pi over lambda. Uh, so that be that becomes our constant a. Uh, y of x uh, comma zero is equal to a sine, where a is the amplitude, a sine two pi lambda over x. Uh, and when it's traveling, y of x sub t, uh, all, all those were at the zero point, y of x sub t is equal to a sine two pi over lambda times x minus vt. If it were going to the, in the opposite direction, it would be x plus vt. Uh, so v the velocity, or I, I haven't been touching the microphone, I apologize if I have, uh, it's a habit I have. Uh, the velocity is equal to delta x over delta t, which is equal to the, to the wavelength lambda divided by the period. So y of x at t is equal to a sine two pi x over lambda minus t over uh, the period. Now we're going to introduce a 
K, which is the wave number, uh, uh, let me catch up because I have some calculations uh, written out. K is equal to two pi. Um, it's K, notice the, the triple uh, equal sign. It, that means it's defined. K is defined as two pi over lambda. And omega, the angular, uh, um, the K is the angular wave number. It's most of the time just called wave number. And omega is called the uh, angular frequency. And it's 2 pi over T, which is also equal to 2 pi F, 2 pi times the frequency. Now, what is K, if you can determine the wavelength, uh, we're going to do some, some uh, wavelength measures. But K at 500, degree, at 500 hertz, uh, K is 9 point. Notice if you have. It's two pi radians per cycle, and lambda is uh, in measured in meters per cycle. So the K ends up being radians per meter. Uh, how many radians for a, uh, a meter wavelength uh, or, or a meter length? How many waves uh, appear? That's the wave number. That's why it's called the wave number. So at 500, I'm talking about. Um, now I'm talking about audio uh, speeds. Uh, we, I'm, and for these calculations, I took the, the speed of sound and air to be 345 meters per second. Uh, it varies with temperature, and we'll learn about that later. But it would, we'll use an average of 345 meters per second. So at, um, at uh, 500 hertz, uh, the, uh, uh, at 500 hertz, the, you have 9.1 radians per meter. Uh, at 1,000 hertz, well, it's double that. Uh, 18.2 radians per meter. And at 10,000 hertz, it's uh, 182 radians per meter. So you can see as you go up in frequency, you get more wave numbers in a meter length. Uh, this is also going to hold true. Uh, spectroscopists use the uh, wave numbers kind of, uh, quite often. It's how many waves you get um, in a meter. Um, and we're, you're probably more familiar with the omega. We, I believe we've used it before. Okay, so uh, x sub t, uh, y of uh, x comma t is equal to a sine kx minus omega t. Uh, v is equal to uh, omega divided by k. And the velocity is equal to lambda times um, frequency. Now, uh, You, you can get these by remembering the old uh, distance equals rate times time and uh, distance equals rate times one over time is equal to uh, the frequency. So uh, distance equals uh, rate divided by the frequency. Uh, those are ways I remember this. Okay, so uh, y of xt is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. The phi is a phase angle. Uh, well, certainly right now I'm going through phase angles as we, uh, in 24, 26, as we talk about uh, AC circuits. Uh, now let's, uh, let's look at this. A sinusoidal wave of frequency F is traveling along a stretched string. The string is brought to rest in a second traveling wave of frequency 2F is established on the string. What is the wave speed of the second wave? Well, it's the same as the first. The, uh, the wave speed doesn't uh, doesn't change. Now, a sinusoidal wave of frequency f is traveling along a stretched string. The string is brought to rest, and a second traveling wave of frequency 2f is established on the string. What is the wavelength of the second string? Um, and the wavelength, uh, let me make sure I got it, it's half, half that of the first wave, okay? And let's go to the uh, uh, the same situation, uh, what is the amplitude of the second string? Well, that amplitude isn't part of this, uh, isn't given in this part of the equation, so it's impossible to determine. Uh, so sinusoidal waves on the string, let's see what we have. Y equals A sine KX minus omega T. Um, you can see the, as the little, the little, uh, uh, actuator goes up and down it's generating this this uh this sinusoidal wave and you can see the p p always stays at the same vertical position 
but it does move up and down with the wave. So uh, V of Y uh, is equal to dy dt. In other words, the velocity is the, the derivative of position with x equals constant. Um, so it's the partial derivative of y um, with respect to t. And that's equal to uh, minus omega uh, a cosine kx minus omega t. Remember, we're keeping x constant, so it doesn't enter into the, uh, the derivative. Now, the acceleration is the second derivative of y, or the uh, first derivative of velocity, with x held constant. So that's the partial of v of y over the partial of t. That's equal to uh, minus omega squared a sine uh, kx minus omega t. Uh, OK, so uh, vy max is equal to, uh, you know, the velocity max is equal to uh, omega a. Now, why is that? Because the cosine travels between minus 1 and 1. So the maximum, uh, you, when it's at minus 1, you're going to get the, uh, uh, you know, the minus will cancel the minus. I mean, right here, we can just look at the absolute values. So the vy, you, you can consider that cosine term just to be 1. And you get uh, omega uh, times a, the amplitude. And the, acceler the uh, acceleration, the max acceleration, the same thing. The sine will travel between minus 1 and 1. So we just take it at max at 1. And um, we get uh, omega squared uh, times a, the amplitude. OK, let's see. The amplitude of a wave, um, let me make sure I'm at the right spot. The amplitude of a wave is doubled with no other changes made to the wave. As a result of this doubling, which of the following statements is correct? The speed of the wave changes, the frequency of the wave changes. Um, it says the amplitude is doubled. The maximum transverse speed of an element of the medium changes. Statements A through C are all true, or none of the statements are true. Um, well, it is only the C, the maximum transverse speed of an element of the medium changes. In other words, how fast it goes up and down is the only thing that changes. Okay, uh, let's see this. So the, we're at the analysis. We're at the the analysis model. Uh, things to remember: v is equal to lambda over t equals lambda times f. Um, the uh, y is equal to a sine kx minus uh, omega t. And let's see, the, some examples are the vibrating blade uh, sends a sinusoidal wave down a string attached to the blade. Uh, a piston vibrates back and forth, emitting sound waves into a tube filled with gas. A guitar body uh, vibrates, emitting sound waves into the air. And the last example, a vibrating electric charge creates an electromagnetic wave that propagates into, the sp into space at the speed of light. That's a 24-26 problem. And you'll get that next semester if you stick with me. Uh, OK, and I, there we'll stop this. It's probably been a long uh, lecture. I apologize, but it's all one section.